incredible challenge first. I turned them down three times. Uh, and then a unique opportunity. Okay. So first, I would like to thank uh, Darlene True Christ from the Deep Carbon Observatory in Rhode Island. As she helped me, she was my sounding board. At the same time, I have to help and be very, pay attention to the words that I use. I have to thank uh, my partner, my dependents, my coworkers, my colleagues, other parents, uh, my family, as without them, I clearly would not be here trying to give this talk. Now, when I chose this title, uh, many of you are probably aware or have some idea what menage a trois means. But for the most part, you probably may think that there is a very strong sensual and sexual connotation to a threesome. And what was Patty possibly thinking when she chose this? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, somehow. In reality, menage a trois is a long term household shared by three people in which love, life, jealousy, all kinds of things are there. But it's this long-term aspect that I am looking for in, for things that might appear as they are not, don't necessarily go together, okay? So before I go on to my next slide, um, I would like to do a little exercise. So since there's a very convenient middle row here, I would like the people on this side that if you have a partner of any kind, please raise one of your arms and leave it up, okay? So you have a partner? Yep? Okay, no, no. The ones on the other side, <laughs> you may have a partner, you can have a partner, a lady. Uh, uh, if you have a dependent, and by that I mean from child to elder, please raise your hand, one hand, okay? Right? And now, if you also have an activity that you love to do, sports, theater, community, whatever it may be, please raise your second arm. Ah, uh, no, I forgot to tell me how to do this thing. And for the most part, with respect to this community, I am a user of the tools that you provide. But for this talk, I am a 59-year-old woman, I have a partner, I have two children, I have parents. I have been in soft money for the past 30 years plus. I see smiles, to me here, it's wonderful. And I am a seagoing oceanographer, mostly for long trips. And so I can draw on these experiences for what I can share with you. You are experts or would be experts in your own personal situation. Okay. And so when I started uh, uh, 
looking at this and I looked at data and I looked at talks and I looked there are three major, four major ways in which this life balance is being depicted. The first one is juggling. And as you can see this uh, gal here, uh, no, I confess this was my most commonly used approach. No, I could not throw the laptop or the child up in the air, but I sure did do something to just delay it until, so that it would take a little bit longer until it came back into my hand. I was also a multi professional multitasker, okay? And, uh, and the goddess here now is trying to balance a few more items than the first one on the left. But what you should be aware is that not all of those arms are in where mine. Those were arms of my partner, my family, other people in the community, teachers, uh, daycare providers, all kinds of things like that. But that's an oversimplification, correct? Each one of these balls, if you wish, has its own <coughs> ball, set of balls, right? And so, okay, let's see, there we go. And so, while well, this one is simply home and family, and I was somewhat not so amused. You know, you can look at all of these pictures, and you can find them with guys, you can find them with women, and all of these things. So, in the case of home and family, the woman one only had partners and child. The guy one also had house. <laughs> uh, okay, and so hence, no, whether you're a gal or a guy here, it's, yes, child, but there's romance. Uh, there is fixing the house. And many of the things which are supposedly on the work side apply also to the right side. We do finances at home. We do strategy at home. So, in other words, the previous or many of these juggling ones are largely uh, oversimplified. The next one is about a balance. And this figure is purposely slightly fuzzy so that you don't get too caught up on the details of the cartoon. I don't like this one. I absolutely don't like this one. Because this fellow is bound to fail. Somebody, something is going to fall. And in this depiction, there is no way to recapture that which is falling. Hopefully, if it falls in my world, it would be something that is temporary, that I can bring back into uh, the whole. The next one, as we're all scientists, of course, is the Venn diagram, okay? And so we use this at work, and now when we're organizing cruises, and, no, go back. Okay, well, so what you see here on the top is that balance is between work and life. Well, that's not true, yeah? Life is at the intersection of all the things that we do, as it is shown in the bottom one. And so, how do then we try to do, perhaps earlier on, to achieve this and try to have these things overlap? Well, I sure took the kids to work, yeah? And I looked long and hard, because most of them tend to be you no know, women with the baby. But as you can see in this picture, Neither mother nor child are particularly happy in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to us. We had the child, we rocked and all of these things, but eventually it became clear that this was not working for either one of us. Being in the sciences, we often have a perk, and that is the flexibility of time, such that we might be able to stay home and not work with the child. Now, some of you are students uh, or postdocs, and you would say, like dead will my mentor allow me to do this at the lab. But in my lab, there were often times when that was the only financially viable possibility for them, and we worked around that. And so, let's go back to the beginning. Oh, I forgot this, I always forget this one. Because, you know, this is another one that we often do. And while this cartoon is perhaps slightly exaggerated, 
I bet, because I do, that many of us now or have my cell phone are walking on the side <coughs> of the soccer game or uh, where is somebody here who will know what I'm talking about on the side of the pumpkin patch uh, holding right and doing that talk. So this now is very common among us. So how did this all get, when does it all get started? So we go to graduate school and whether it is the advisor or it is the pressure and the presence in the example of the older students, uh, the more serious students, or the postdocs, we are there all the time. But on top of that, at least I went to graduate school because I loved what I was doing there. It was so exciting. And my mother would call and say, you're still at the lab? Yep, I still was at the lab. With time, this may continue to be because it becomes your first grant. And then perhaps it's because it's tenure time. And then, well, <laughs> then we arrive back at now the goddess in the lab. And have, and have no idea how long it took me to find all of these uh, images. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one was provided by a student at Scripps. And so you start with designing your experiment, you carry your experiment, you analyze the data, you publish the paper. Okay. Uh, now you go a little bit further, you know, perhaps you are running your own lab, you have to mentor the students, you get a postdoc, ah, you're in an academic setting, now you have to teach. Regardless of which one you're doing, whether it's a federal lab or it's a federal agency, now you have the committees. And then after the committees, perhaps your chair of the department or you know, in charge of the division may have 50 or 100 PIs on you. And then you become a director of whatever it is. I haven't even left the lab. And I'm caught in this, right? Uh, and so I come to the last depiction that I have found very commonly. And that's the one of being at the crossroads. And so this one implies that there are choices to be made that are absolute. You take a band. No, are we, do we find ourselves in situations like this? Absolutely. Uh, there may be partners in different cities. You may have to change the job focus into something that is more administrative. Oh, I love these alternative careers. Okay, um, well, this is not the path that I took. My road tended to bend. Sometimes my road even backtracked. Um, and there was the year when it became clear that I needed to be home more. I was traveling perhaps once a month. I heard somebody here yesterday, Mary Jane, say, well, this is my eighth trip this year, okay? So this is something that many of us live. And so I, on Monday, picked up the phone in my calendar and I canceled every trip for the following 12 months. Yeah, I did. I even called the program manager and canceled the panel. Now, some of you will know that is a horrifying thought. Uh, and you know what? Nothing happened. The world kept turning, the meetings kept happening, and the proposals were written, and the papers were, and everyone understood. And uh, I had a much happier family. And so before we panic and think about going to extremes, uh, we can make small changes. Perhaps you go home early, and I mean early, okay, 3 p.m., <laughs> once a week. Or perhaps you go to work early, once a week, okay? So small changes, you know, really uh, do work. Because in my life, all the pieces have always been interconnected, more like this cog diagram. Now, over time, the size of the cogs change.
changed. And the speed at which the cogs turned also changed. And so one is forever um, adapting uh, to this, which then implies that one needs to frequently rebound and frequently <laughs> compromise. And um, I remember very clearly it was probably at you no know, first or second year of, as an assistant professor. And I was at my annual review in my chair who was the only other woman in the department at the time, as we're finishing our conversation, said, well, Patty, I hope that you realize that you probably can't have it all. And that moment is etched in my memory. I can tell you what the lighting was like. I can tell you what the furniture was, where I was seated, because I stopped listening. I come from a long line of working women and I said, hell yes, I will have it all. Well, three decades later, I fully understand what Reina was trying to tell me, is that I probably could have it all. I just not, might not have it all at the same time and as well as I would like to have it. Okay. And so, We know we love what we do. And when we're back where we are at this meeting, or whether we are at a cruise or in the lab, uh, there are times when there is, there is no time. It is impossible to have balance. If I am um, the lead scientist PI, or if Mike was doing NAMIS for you no know, four weeks, and I'm going to the Antarctic for 10 weeks at the end of November, that is all I am going to do. And that is something that needs to be recognized. Okay? Because when you come back, okay, and you have enjoyed, oh, I see all kinds of laughs here, and you have enjoyed for the younger ones one uninterrupted hot meal from beginning to end. Okay? Uh, it's not that we love them any less. Right? It's not that we don't miss them, <laughs> but we shouldn't be feel guilty about it. This is something that we should all be able to talk about rather than pretend it doesn't happen. If it's not the children, it may be for those who don't have children, that it's been a while that you actually picked up the phone and called your elders, to put it that way. Okay? And so that unease I hesitate to call it guilt, no? It's with us often, but it shouldn't be. Did I do this? Oh yes, you did. <laughs> because there are times when there will be a crisis, okay? It does. And so at that moment you stop and you freeze. And the way I see it, and the way that this quote indicates, when you stop, you have a chance to reassess. To me, that's an opportunity, okay? And so, I will go for that opportunity, but what do you do? This is not something that is only pertinent to families or to science, it's everywhere. And so, you should make a plan, even a small, simple plan. Okay. If you don't know what to do, okay, uh, I can tell you that your institution will send you to some HR course that will take forever if you have not already been in the committee that was supposed to organize this said HR course, as I was as chair of the personnel committee for many years. Okay? And even more, there is so much material out there, from books to talks to videos to you name it, such that it is completely off-putting. Okay? I go
ego, it became one more cog than into the things that I was supposed to do. Okay? And it is perhaps why I was so hesitant when I was invited to uh, uh, challenge to give this talk. I must confess that I am right now reading this book because it is presenting life work as a conflict, not as a balance. And it is presenting it strictly from the perspective of economics, from a societal perspective, from what do our institutions, academic, commercial, federal, need to get from us. Very different. I always am trying to learn and understand how the system works. And so I posit to you that life balance is the birthplace of creativity, innovation, and change. There will be multiple stages, not all at the same time. You will be vulnerable. Somebody will be pissed at you. Okay? And here I come, I've spent a lot of time you know, listening and talking. I come to the realization that there are these self-imposed expectations and out in also imposed from the outside, they're slightly different in their priorities for uh, men and women. The women feel that they need to do it all, they need to uh, do it well, and they should never appear to show fear. However, the guys should never be perceived as weak. And what makes me sad and makes me upset, because I have two young adults, 22 and 26, one of each, and no students and postdocs, I've worked hard so that they don't have that perception, and still, they get it from the outside. I heard something very similar from a peer of mine last week, and I thought that by now I should be able to wear a purple hat and not care what anybody says, right? And so, this becomes a roller coaster. And I have two slides that sort of show data, okay? This is one. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, uh, on the y-axis, you have from pain to joy, it's emotion. Some of you may want to call it stress, okay? And, you know, as we start in graduate school, postdocs and all of these things, you know, there are lots of ups and downs, the papers are this and that and whatever it is that, you know, you think that it absolutely fills your time, you couldn't possibly add something. And then some of us do, okay? At which point, the amplitudes of this go just through the roof, okay? And you wonder, how did I possibly, I already it was full, how am I doing all of this stuff now, yeah? It eventually slows down a little bit, you know, and then perhaps even maybe come back to this. That's about all I can tell you because I am now in this phase. And so I don't yet have the experience, not the life experience, to talk about. There may be others here who do. I do have to tell you that even though I rationally knew what was coming, I was absolutely unprepared for the emotional roller coaster that it is. Because most of you are probably more familiar with this side, right? The baby and uh, the baby carriage. Well, I am now at this side with an elder and a wheelchair feeding and pushing at the same time. I find this cartoon very black humor, very bittersweet, and extremely personal. And so I have tried throughout to make sure that this, uh, everything I say applies equally well for the guys and the gals, right? But there is an enormous amount of data out there. This is but one example out of the uh, medical faculty at a tier one university in the United States. Uh, this, uh, I found it in the Washington Post, but it is you know, published in top journals uh, in uh, social, sciences, social sciences. And that still, women tend to have, spend more time teaching, mentoring, doing housework and care work, there's a difference between the two, while the men do more research 
in or take advantage of some of these flex policies. But you could say, but Patty, the differences are small. Yes, and so we are making progress. This is positive. This is not a complaint. However, as I was talking uh, earlier, a lot of the gentlemen, as they're taking advantage of this, I have one of my uh, the senior research scientists at Bigelow who stays home with his child every Monday. And he's being commended for it. Wonderful. But the gals, well, you know, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Okay, so it's a little bit sort of like your Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers stories, where they say that she did everything he did only on high heels and backwards, right? So this uh, sort of double expectations. And so I um, come to just a few words of advice. And perhaps for me, this is the most important slide of this entire talk. And at the very personal level, you need, you better find somebody who respects you. Love? Yeah. Passion? Superb. But those will come and go, and respect is the one that is going to last. But go be there for the long term. And when it comes to your science collaborators, it actually is not that different. You also need to work with people who really enjoy what they do, who enjoy the way that you do the science, who respect the way that you do your science, even if you disagree. But perhaps you say, well, this is easier said than done. Because some of you may already be here and are thinking, well, I wonder what's happening at home. Perhaps I should have stayed here. Somebody called and said, whatever, the window broke, or you know, as in my case, the house got hit by lightning. <coughs> Partner, where are you? Um, or you are then home, and right, we call we have an expression in our household, it's called monkey brain, where you're there smiling and cooking, and your brain is going at 50 times revolutions, so you actually are at work. Uh, and so my mother said, uh, who was a businesswoman until she retired, occasionally, you will go to work on the weekend, and you will work. No guilt. And occasionally, maybe more than occasionally, you will be home or you will take a Wednesday off to go skiing with your kids. No guilt. And I remember very well the first time that she told me this because I always felt the pressure that I had to be everything. Uh, and so, what can we do to take care of ourselves, right? Even baby steps. Well, you can do anything you want, okay? Ken can go sailing, Kate and Barney can play music, uh, or you can do some other so, so, no, not so traditional things. Whatever it is, have fun in activities other than work. Because for me, work is fun. Okay? So you gotta pick your own cup of tea here. And all along, you need to ask some personal questions. What would your life no, what would make your life better? I have to get used to read this thing here. Uh, what, are, what things are absolute deal breakers? Do you have to pick the kids from school every day? Do you have to cook your meal or make your Halloween costume, okay, if you're here? Uh, or is it a right to just simply get store-bought? Uh, can you take advantage of some of the system weaknesses? Let me tell you that the PT and the other parents are a lot more understanding if it's dad who comes with Milano cookies from the supermarket for baked goods for the class than if it is the mom, okay? <laughs> Don't forget that, okay? Uh, do you need lab free weekends uh, to play with your cover band? Um, do you need to modify your job? Do you need to manage your time, or do you need to manage your energy at work? Uh, perhaps you choose for a while to only do one meeting per year. Last week I was at uh, 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 UBC, and somebody told me that they only do one cruise every two years. 
for the next 10 years for their personal reasons, okay? And so maybe you define a, a small list of tasks or things, but perhaps you need to acknowledge that life is a journey and not a goal, and hence you need to fill it very wisely. And there are also some institutional suggestions. There are work-life policies, whether it is care leaves, tenure delays, dual career issues, lactation rooms, dependent care. All of these need careful consideration. Some of us are now in those committees who can push for these things, okay? Which means that then for those of you who are younger, you need to use them. You should not feel that if you are going to use them, you somehow are going to be penalized, which it has been the culture and is the culture in many places still, right? Um, and then there are policies which are focused on other things, you no know, uh, equal pay, housing assistance, commuting, and a variety of things. All of these have important work-life implications. And then, of course, there are things that need to be done at the national level. And here we need to acknowledge that there are some very important differences among the nations and that perhaps this presentation is slightly US uh, biased as our Scandinavian colleagues have work-life balance policies that, oh, I am so envious, I wish we had something like that in the US, uh, but we don't. And so, I say to you, you assess, you make a simple plan, you make small changes, lots of times you don't need to make big changes, and you reassess again, and you talk about this within your family, outside of your family, in this conference, during the rest of the week. That's why they brought me here, okay? And so, daring uh, greatly, and with humor as my ally, um, I hope that I have shown you some of the tasks that were involved, some of the players uh, that uh, were involved. And yes, I may have come up with a formula, but it's only the one that has worked for me in my family. Uh, and so, when I started my talk with the title of Ménage à Trois, yeah, I have shared with multiple people. I have cheated on multiple people. <laughs> I am with them for the long term at no home work here. And I hope that they continue to help me to live a good life. <coughs> Stay positive. Thank you very much. questions and comments because you, I don't have answers for you, right? But if you don't make questions or comments, then it is my right as the plenary speaker to ask you questions. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, there you go. Perfect. So, questions for Patty? Or comments? Do you comments? Have? Experiences? Come on. I'm done. 
I have to go home. There's other things to do. And I think it's one of the simplest ways to manage your life, to just have a little bit of a awareness and self-discipline and be like, okay, that's it. Going home, there'll be a new day tomorrow. And um, I guess a question, um, how long did it take you to figure, figure it out? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Therafield was is here in the front row, and he kept smiling at me, nodding throughout. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> and I say this because, you know, once my young adults left and that, that was done, then there was this whole, you know, um, space. And if I were to follow everything that I have just tried to say, I would have bound, I would have filled that time in a balanced way. Instead, I took that time to catch up on everything that I was behind at work. And I probably worked. 18 hours a day, not very balanced. And so now that they've been gone for a couple of years, I am trying to do uh, what you know, I said today. So it is a never ending lesson. You never know, it's a lifelong question. Great, thank you. Right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, here. Oh.